I'm Dave Roberts. I'm the State Grazing Land Specialist for Natural Resource Conservation Service here in New York. And we have here today Ben Beecher from Shady Hollow Farms. And he's interested in transferring over his dairy operation to a grazing operation. One of the most important things that you have to think about when you're transferring over to a grazing system is that you're going to have to take the, the cows have to come back every day, twice a day to get milked. So there's a point in which they can only walk so far out, get grass, and then come back before it gets to the point that it's not, not worth doing anymore. So it's got to be laid out in a situation so that it's easy for them to go in, it's easy for the work, it's easy to turn in, you have water in each system. And then Ben, let's see, you're going to go, you're going to milk in the morning, and then what are you going to do? Well, then we'll turn them out, and let them go out to pasture and eat for about eight hours, bring them back down, feed them their corn silage, and bring them back in the barn for their grain, second milking, and then they'll get their hay at night. Okay, so you're looking at basically a half a day's grazing, which is a great way to go when you're first transferring over to a grazing system. Uh, what are some of the things that you expect that the challenges and difficulties that you're going to run into? Well, we'll have to clear off the land and put up fences to get the cows out there and make laneways. Basically, just getting them to it and getting them out in an area where they need to be. Okay, and what about the uh, rations and stuff? Do you expect any difference in the milk production as you go into it? I think we'll actually go up in milk production, being that they'll have grass year or throughout the whole summer and they'll have a constant feed supply so there won't be any drop off towards the end of the summer where they'll won't have the grass that they need now when you start converting over into a grazing system you're going to have to take your crop fields which in the past traditionally you've had close by because that's where your feed source is and you're going to convert them into pastures Okay, do you have any idea what type of grasses you're interested in? Well, probably some orchard grasses or some uh, clover, maybe timothy out there. Uh, basically, I was just going to use one of, a pasture mix from a company and, and uh, plant that out there. Okay, uh, that's actually those are really good grasses and, and legumes. There's a couple things that you want to think through when you're getting into a, what type of grass you're going to be planting and uh, pasture mix. Um, up here in the north, mainly you're dealing with your cool season grasses, your warm season grasses. Uh, your summer's not long enough and you have to graze them quite a bit different than you do the cool season. So if you want to try them, yeah, but I would recommend getting started with your cool season grasses. And what I mean by that is they tend to start growing earlier in the spring. When it gets hot and gets drier during the summer, they tend to slow down, uh, similar to your lawn. You don't cut your lawn quite as much in July and August as you would early in the spring. And then they start growing again in the fall. So let's talk a little bit about the different types of species of grass. We have orchard grass, we have Kentucky bluegrass, we have some bromes, uh, timothy, and then for the clovers and legumes, we have alfalfa, and we have your basically your white clover and your red clover. And then there's some bird's foot trefoil and a few others. Uh, with the legumes, they're nitrogen fixing, meaning that they actually pull nitrogen out of the air put it into the ground, the grasses get to use that nitrogen to grow. So it's a symbiotic relationship between the two somewhat in that you can reduce the amount of nitrogen fertilizer commercially that you need to use by putting clovers and alfalfas. Alfalfas tend to be better for hay along with your timothy grass is better for hay than it is for grazing. And there's characteristics of the plant and that how the leaves grow that are more are better suited for being able to cut once and then grazing where a cow comes back and eats it one day and then four or five days later when it starts growing again it comes back and eats it again so your good grasses when you're 
looking at a mix. Orchard grass is a great grass. Uh, your Kentucky bluegrass, it doesn't grow as much. You don't get the tonnage, but the quality's there. You have a lot higher nitrogen or uh, crude protein in it. Orchard grass is a little lower, but you get the tonnage there. So you have to weigh out what you're after in your grasses. And then for legumes, if you're going to be grazing closer to the ground in a shorter grazing, which uh, a lot of your cool seasons and your pastures will be, you're grazing from say four to six inches, you're turning in, you graze down to two to three, three to four inches when you turn them back out. Your, your white clovers will do real good because they don't grow quite as tall uh, with the closer grazing they tend to do okay. Your red clovers do real good when you're into a taller grazing or into a, a hay mix. When you're shifting over to a grazing system, some of the things you gotta think through is, what's your workload gonna be like? Uh, a lot of people think that it's gonna be a lot easier because the cows are doing all the work now, where you were putting up hay and your, all your feed, silage, now, the cows are actually getting it. But it's really not, it's still gonna take the same amount of time to get the work done, but the work's gonna shift. And Ben, what do you foresee that the differences are gonna be when you when you start shifting over? Well, we'll have to do more better managing of the pastures. Uh, once the cows go out, if they need to be clipped, you'll have to go out and clip the pasture down. You have to take care of the fences make sure they're tight, make sure the fences are on, working properly. You'll have to switch your gates when they need to be switched, when they need to go in a new paddock. Take care of your laneways. Yeah, there's gonna be some things that, you know, you did you took for granted in the past. Uh, your cows always came back to the barn or, or they had the water source that they always depended on. Now you gotta take the water source and put it in the pasture. So, you know, you gotta pump it. What are you planning on doing for your water? Are you gonna pump it? Are you looking at gravity feed systems? Just how is it laid out on your farm here? Probably what I plan on using for the uh, new area of the pasture where they'll be going is a gravity feed system out of a spring that is up there. And, uh, They'll be using the regular cricks that they use now for the pasture that they're in right now. You know, there's a direct relationship between the amount of water that they have compared to the amount of milk they have, because milk's got a lot of water in it. Water is one of your cheapest nutrients that you have. All the cost in the water is getting it to where the cows need to drink it. Though we're talking with dairy today with Ben, it applies to just about any type of livestock that you have that's a grazer and if you're interested in working and getting involved in one of these systems or trying to improve what you already have, there are several federal agencies and state agencies out there that can help you. Uh, I'm with Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is a U.S. Department of Agriculture. You also have Cornell Cooperative Extension. You have uh, the, the county soil and water conservation districts. So just about every county in the state, in the nation, there are places that you can go and seek out information. Um, one thing I would recommend is that you take and you look as, as many different sources of information that you can. Just because I have and say one thing and, and and think that this is the greatest thing to the way I think, it might not fit into your operation. So you want to take little pieces of information from everywhere you can, apply it to your system. Uh, what you hear in one part of the country or from, from one person, your place might be a little bit different uh, and you need to apply it. And with that, Ben, where have you been? What type of information to have them and what have you gained from that? I've been on a lot of pasture walks, saw how other people have managed their systems. I've been to uh, the county office and talked to the guys up there that know all about this. I've read a lot of books on grazing. 
So one of the things that been really harped on here is is uh, pasture walks. These things are great. They they've been slowly developing over the years. What they are is they get somebody that's a specialist in one thing or another. They be it silva pasture, be it intensive grazing, uh, animal production, veterinary care, and then it's a whole bunch of local farmers, other people that are trying grazing and they usually have a presentation and talk about some type of subject to focus on. Then after that, everybody kind of walks around and they break up into different groups and you get to learn what has worked for one person, what works for another person. I hope you enjoyed what we had to say here today. And it's a, I know it's, there's a lot of learning to do with this. It's something that you just don't learn overnight. Years and years of experience go into it. Um, there are going to be some challenges, but they're exciting challenges to take. And with that, I just want to thank you for listening to it. And Ben, I sure do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to spend some time telling me about your operation. Well, thank you for having me.